you simply bust off the little tabs here for the locking mechanism. These things get that much better. So we're talking about Knipex versus Milwaukee. Now, before you look at the background and say, of course, Milwaukee, I'm wearing a DeWalt shirt. And also, Klein is actually my preferred weapon of choice when it comes to tools of the electrical trade. These Crocs are considerably uh, very nice too. So let me show you what my gripe is about all the tools and then we'll kind of talk about it. But recently I took these on another job with me despite me not liking them that much. And I was disappointed. I ended up having to borrow the customer's Milwaukee stamped strippers to get the job done. I was troubleshooting plugs. I was breaking apart circuits, dividing the circuit in half, and I had to tie the circuits back in. And there's something to be said about existing wire that's that short and trying to make a loop on it with strippers that don't have loops. There's no loops in these. And no needle nose, because these don't do needle nose. Spending 60 bucks and wanting to justify your purchase, because that's what we all do. And I think that's what a lot of this YouTube stuff stems from is trying to justify the purpose, you know, the purchase or someone sent you the tool for free or whatever the case might be. Let me show you these actually in use. I'm going to show you these in use. We're going to talk about the price and then you guys tell me what you think about it. So what's going on? We got Wilderness Preacher along with one comment Z and others in the chat. Let me uh, switch this here. Okay. I'm going to try to keep up with the chat, but also my clamp is right in the middle of the chat. So, uh, there is that. Okay. First things first. Okay. We're going to take our wire. We'll look how nice it cuts. Here comes your Milwaukee's. They cut really nice. All right. We're going to take some rope, take the Milwaukee's. They also cut nice. They didn't cut all the way through, but they cut pretty darn impressive. We go with our Knipex. They didn't quite cut it all the way through, but we can make it happen. They cut nice. Go with the Crocs. Very similar to the Milwaukee's. And let's go with the Klein. They're all pretty close, the Klein probably being the worst. These, these are just stamped steel. But they still cut it. They all cut fairly well. When we look at actually making up, and case in point here, how many of you bought this because of YouTube told you to, and it wasn't the hollow set? And then this sat in your in your tool pouch and you only use the 9 sixteenths out of the non hollow set and the rest of it was just a waste of heft and money in, in your arsenal because I already knew it was heavy before I even bought it and I didn't even really use it. I, I, I didn't fall for the bandwagon like I don't mostly. So heads up, if you're considering getting this, it's actually pretty nice because it's a lot lighter. I took out the other two sizes and put them somewhere else. If you are in maintenance, I think the 1130 seconds can help you out a lot. But uh, yeah, it, it cuts down on the weight and you can slide the all thread all the way through. It's pretty good for industrial applications, which is what I specialized in for about five years. So let's look at the Milwaukee's. How do they strip? Now, on the Milwaukee's, we've got stranded on one side, solid on the other. So we're going to line this up on the number 12 solid. I'm going to give it a strip. And like butter, man, these things strip amazing. Do the same thing over here. You'll note that sometimes this gets caught up here. you got to pay attention while you're opening them until you get used to it. And they got a little bump there. It's because it gives them added leverage. It's just something to get used to. So they go in there, they cut. 
we gotta turn them around to see which side we're gonna strip on. The solid is up here. Number 12, clamp down. Also strips really nice. If we look at the, look at the clients. Clients are the same thing. You look at whichever side you want, whether you're solid or stranded. We're gonna go here for solid. Get on that number 12. Strips nicely. The Crocs, however, does not care. They don't have a size. They just do it. Doesn't matter whether it's stranded or solid. They strip on either side, so they're always ready to go. You don't even have to think about it. 12 is 12. And if I flip these around like this, and we cut again, you'll see they strip no matter what side you have them on. So that's one of the benefits of these racketeers is that you don't have to flip these around. Let's look at making up a joint. Let's look at one more set. My favorite set. These are the Kleins. They actually make up joints fairly well. They do all the combination stuff. They cut the threads and they strip nicely. Uh, solid there. And they strip nice as well. And they cut. All right, let me get another piece of wire. If we're gonna look at loops, because that's important, we're gonna look at loops. We're gonna find the 12 here. We're gonna strip it. Now, we don't really have loops. This isn't really a loop. This is, this is for cutting threaded uh, screws and stuff. We can cut with it. And we can kind of loop with it, but it's not really a loop. Now, when you use these, what happens is you wind up with less straight for the copper here. And when you go to wrap this around, what happens is your insulation has a higher chance of making contact on that screw. And then you're in a world of trouble. So what we prefer to do is to use the needle nose. Yeah, baby. Tell Sissy to help you. Okay, well, she has to say yes. Okay, you say daddy said yes. Okay, if not, come back in here. I'm going to have to go do something. All right, so we just bent these around with the needle nose portion. You can see where we got a nicer flat here. You can see where we got a nice flat here. We wrap these around right here. Get it nice and tight. Sneak it on there. We got a little bit of insulation touching. That could be a problem. Let's, uh, let's not use that as an example. Let's try again. Let's try again. I'm not happy with that install. Strip it. Start way up here again. Bend it down. There's your loop. There we go. Now this is where it gets tricky. This is where we separate the useful tools from the unuseful tools. Okay. My favorite, the Kleins. Can they do it? Sure, they can grab up there. We could, we could pinch that if we wanted to. Keep in mind we're, we're using the back end of the receptacle where we're grabbing. And if we squeeze this, we could close it if we wanted to. But honestly, we got kind of lucky on this angle here. Yes, baby. What do you need, baby? Uh, okay. Hang on. Two seconds, guys. Cool. All right, so let's see if we can grab 
with our Knip X. So very similar. We need to get back there and we need to be able to pinch this. Let's try to make another loop to give this the better chance. Let's use the Knip X the whole way. We're gonna go with, where is it here? Number 12, solid. We're gonna use the Knip X to make the loop. We're gonna bend that down. Because you can't you can't use these as wire loops. Put that on there like that. Now we gotta close this. Now in all my experience, I've had trouble closing with the Knip X. They just don't get in there like other tools do. And I'm gonna show you right now what I mean. We might be able to get that. We might be able to get that, let's see. Just barely. We got it on there. It's, we got it with the Knip X. Took a little bit to get it, but we got it. The point is when you're doing speed and uh, what I mean is when you're working with speed and you're trying to get a lot done or you're working with a little bit of wire that's hanging out of a box and you don't have a lot to play with, you can't really do your loops like you think you can when you're actually in the field. And one thing that's always going to work for you is these little stamp sets because they're like 20 bucks at the most. They're not 60. These are also 20. You can get on there very easily. It only takes about that much of wire. So I'm going to cut this back up there. It only takes about that much wire. You loop, the, you loop that around there. You hook it on there and then you use little needle nose action here and there's almost nothing you can't grab I mean we we gave this the worst chance it could possibly have we still managed to sneak it around there without even trying live under pressure um, in my experience these are all talk and that just goes to show you you know live that the proof is in the plan. I can't even unwrap this thing very easily. So if we were to try to do it again, if I was trying to do it like really quick, I would probably, would have to leave it long like this, would have to. Could be a learning curve thing. And when it's all the way down here, then you can grab it. You, you can loop it on there. It does work, but you don't always get this luxury with existing wiring in the wall. And I ended up having to borrow the customer stamp steel set. And these just work every time. So I would much rather have three sets of these than one set of these for the same amount of money. So if we were to loop this, you don't know it's there. The screw might be screwed in a little more. Get on there. On the neutral side, switch to the hot. Might have closed it up a little bit more. There we go. And we got the needle nose. And you can just get in there. Close it completely on there. These just can't do that. You've got to leave it long. So... When you're using these, 
you're going to strip out quite a bit. Pretty much going to take this like this. Bend it straight down so you can get that straight right there. These aren't wire loops. They try to tell you they are in the packaging. They're full of crap. Loop that around your screw. And you might need to angle the wire up like this, just a little bit beyond to get on there. But they work. They're just not they're just not near as quick as a pair of stamp steel. And if you're a beginner and you're buying these because the internet told you to, you're probably gonna have a hard time. If you're an experienced technician that really only needs a handful of tools. And you want to have a nice little tool set, have everything you need. That's a different story. But in my experience, I didn't have a good experience with these. And I keep wanting to like them. I keep trying them. But it, it's just not happening. They're just not enjoyable for me. Whenever I had that guy on the channel and he was, I was teaching him how to bend conduit live, he had bought a pair of these. And I asked him, I said, hey, how do you like these? And he said, I like them because everyone else likes them. But ultimately, he went down the road and he bought these on his own. After he spent 60 bucks on a pair of Knipex. So keep that in mind. These are good, I suppose. They just, if they made this thinner, it would be far more usable because you can't use this to make up a joint. There's not enough meat here and they kind of spring open while you're trying to twist a joint. You're really squeezing hard down here. These are like kind of designed in the UK. If you look at the UK style of tools, you'll notice that a lot of their tools aren't made for twisting joints. They're made for these Wagos. So these probably work just fine. They're just stripping wire. They're plugging and playing. But when you start trying to wrap and you start trying to do like American and wiring, these, these kind of go out the window in my opinion. So that's kind of my thought on that. Let me see if I can catch up with the chat. I'll gladly accept the Knipex. See, I need the Knipex to look cool on YouTube, though. That's the problem. Uh, have those clients, yeah. What's up, Jeremy? Doing pretty good. Uh, OW says, what's good, brother? What's going on? And uh, Jamie Chu is driving and half listening. Appreciate you tuning in. Well, that's all I got. Uh... One of the kids is sick. I was kind of sick yesterday. Um, strippers are the cheapest tool to sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think we've all learned the hard way not to cut ceiling grid wire with your strippers. I think we've all done it, but it's a cheap fix. Uh, the, these are, man, I don't want to say anything too bad about these because people love these on the internet. I don't know why. They don't do it for me. They just don't. But uh, I've shown you a practical use, especially when you got existing wiring, especially when you've, you're going to a house that was wired by an electrician when these only existed. So you're never going to get the same grab like you need when you're trying to reuse existing wiring. What's up? Hit the like button. Yeah. Don't care for looking cool, only care for utility. Yeah, exactly. Somebody wants a shout out. Uh, Hadley Grace, what's going on? Inside Breeze says, guess what? I'm afraid to uh, ask. But we do have moderators in here. So, oh, nice. You got me. Chicken butt. I never would have guessed. Okay, so... Um, 
something I just tried on these. I busted off the the overhangs where you can flip these down. I've occasionally used these and they get stuck in the closed position. And I think that'll help that. These are kind of perfect in every way. I was really wrong about the first Milwaukee's that I tried. And I said some really bad things about them. And I still stand by that on that generation. But these are the, the needle nose like strippers. So I think these are the seven in ones. And the 11 in ones or whatever they are. I'm trying to see what they are. These are the 48-22309. Seven nines. The other ones that have the flat bill up here, kind of like the Knipex, are not as good as these Kleins. And these Kleins are still kind of my favorite because they they just work, man. They got the crimper built in. You can make joints up with them. They're heavy enough where you can hit with them. They kind of do everything you need them to. And they're rugged and they're easy to find. These replace my needle nose. So I don't even have to carry around needle nose when I have these because they have the needle nose and they strip and they shear and they're forged. So this has been a nice addition and I'm glad that I listened to you guys to give Milwaukee another try because these are actually really decent. But the Klein stuff is always gonna have a place, man, because that's what we started with. It's thin. You get the true wire loops. Uh, you, you can't deny the speed of a wire loop on a stamped set of strippers. Are they going to break? Yeah, they're going to break easier, but they're also more compact. So if you've got this kind of tool pouch set up that you're rocking. Where you got this tough built here. I think everybody has this tough built by now. We can load it out. Actually, hang on. I gotta, I gotta flip the camera around. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. Let me get one more camera angle. Not that one. Okay, that's about as good as you're going to get. So we got the tough built that is so affordable. It's it's hard to beat. And I left this tag on here because I've got this $100 veto. So I'm not trying to pose and say, you know, this is the one that I use every day. Because this is the one that I use. This is a really, really nice bag. The veto is. But it's 100 bucks. For 30 bucks, you get this. And in my opinion... Being able to take this off, especially as a helper, when you get a delivery or something, is huge. So, every one of these has a really nice knife pocket. Your strippers just fit wherever you need them to because they're smaller. You don't have to worry about trying to fit larger strippers with whatever you're doing. Back this up just a little bit more. And then you can fit full size clients there. One of the tools that I've really taken a liking to is this 11 in one for HVAC. Klein's really bad about doing this. They put HVAC on it, they stick it in the HVAC aisle, and then us electricians never find it. But that's really nice. So you get all the bits you want. This portion goes in your drivers. And then it turns into a bit holder when you slide the quarter inch up just a little bit. And then you flip it around for a 5 16 The best part about this, and you're not going to hear anyone else on YouTube talk about this because they just don't have the experience. When this goes in your pocket, this doesn't stab your leather seats. It doesn't jab through your jeans. It's flat. You can't do that with a lot of screwdrivers. So... You can actually take the bit out and then it's no longer sharp. And that's something that's huge when it comes with a, to a screwdriver. Also, 
because Tough Built is not very good about making tool pouches specifically for certain tools. They're very generic and kind of terrible at it. This slides all the way through because this was never going to fit here and it's not going to go anywhere. So it's got its little benefits there. Another one that I've really taken a liking to is this insulated multi from Klein. What's really good about this, you can switch these out very quickly. Now I'm not a huge fan of things that switch out forever and you're, you're just constantly switching bits and all that. But I will say this thing has its place because if you're doing arc faults or something, doing an arc fault breaker, these screws back here on your arc fault breakers, they're very tiny. And your standard screwdrivers don't really fit them. So this is a standard blade here. And it fits it, but it's also kind of overlapping on there, right? Let's see if I can get you a better kind of profile. This has that blade size that you can swap out very quickly. And it fits exactly on the whole screw and doesn't overlap. And that's really good for Zinscos. If you're doing troubleshooting on older Zinscos, older federal, things like that, they got these little small tiny screws like you'd see in like a an industrial motor control center or something on a PLC or something. They they had those tiny screws. So I highly recommend this because if this wears out, you just for 10 bucks you go get another one of these. And then you're insulated, you're that much safer. But this thing's been awesome. Really, really like this tool. So then you got your strippers, your 10 in one, whatever you got. And you got a knife, you got room for a hot stick, you got your tape measure. You're pretty well loaded out. I'm not gonna talk about all the different tools because I'm not trying to, you know, sell anything here. I didn't even do any, uh, seems like YouTube wants you to sell all this stuff and pull affiliate links and have you guys shop and click. I'm not into that, dude. I didn't do that purposely. The Volt Claw is really good, though. Check it out on Amazon. This grabs wire. So you can literally pull wire off of breakers. Sometimes the breakers, the handles will break and stuff on older breakers. And you can actually pull the wire out. So if we were to clamp these on this wire, I should be able to do it. Hang on. There. See, so yeah, I've clamped these on this wire here. So I'm going to show you the strength of this volt claw. There we go. See, it's actually a pretty good grab on it. Because these aren't light, you know. Volt claw is pretty legit. And then if you're in the back of a GFCI and the box is way too small and the GFCI is extra deep because they always are, you can really start smashing wire in without having to worry about breaking the wire because you got to do what you got to do. Put the link of the affiliate links. I don't want to, man. I don't do this for money. I might. If you want me to, so you guys can find it, but I don't really care. Kinebex or Milwaukee? Uh, Milwaukee, man. Milwaukee. It's a third of the price. So the question isn't, you know, will the Kinebex last longer than the Milwaukee? The question is, Will the Knipex last longer than three Milwaukee's? Let me look at the chat. You can always donate to someone that needs tools or apprentice. We do that all the time, man. Not everyone's willing to look around. That's true. Uh, let's see here. Are those Marvel pliers? No. Uh, which ones? We got Kleins and Crocs. Racketeers. I always see my strippers, they work, but yeah. <laughs> I 
Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Kinebex has a lifetime warranty. Not sure about the Milwaukee ones. That's cool. All right, man. So, what's going on, Budsville? Hey, Budsville, you like this DeWalt shirt? Ch check out the back. All right, we're out of here. That's all I got. Bro, tough but anything is legit. I switched my belts and pouches. The clip is the best thing I've ever made for belts and wall mounts are slick and cheap. Everything's durable as heck. Z31, hang on, I got something to show you. This stuff is also really cool. This is from Lock Supply. And if you can get your hands on it, you should check it out. I've got a couple of videos about it. This belt is just like the Tough Build stuff. I got a couple of them. I'm, I, if I can get my hands on more, I'll give more away. I just sent another one to Joshua. But this stuff here is really nice because the clip is metal. So I had to get a level. The clip is metal. This portion here is metal. And the pockets are actually thought out. And I can get everything in this pouch, in this one pouch. Like, we can, uh, you can do a whole loadout for wire pulling, for terminations, for whatever you're doing, you can load this thing, I mean like completely up. And I, I'm just throwing tools in here. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be practical here. Running out of tools to throw in here. By the way, these are the best knip axes, if you ask me. Why, why would you buy these $60 Knipexes? And I'm not against Knipex, and I'm not against spending the money. I'm against, I'm against YouTubers telling you that these are great when there's better out there. I'm the type of guy that's not cheap and buy the good stuff once instead of three times, especially because I'm an apprentice and buying tools for the first time. Lifetime warranty is a big plus. Yeah. The pockets are kind of skinny on some of the pouches. That's cool, though. Just have to find the reason to tell the wife I need more pouches. Dude, these things are cheap. So you would expect this thing to be expensive. This is less than $30. That's what makes this great. So you've literally got these guys here. <clears throat> and don't get me wrong. These guys are great. Right? Uh, I don't really have anything bad to say about Vito because they make really nice stuff. And th this is a very well thought out pouch. The selling point on this pouch would be that this is hollow here. And you can put almost anything in this pouch and it will go all the way through. So you can put, and it's, it's, it's big too. So this is, this is a huge tool and it just fits in there. So really, really nice, but for 30 bucks, it's hard to recommend Tough Built when you got something like this going on. But let's be honest, this is the best Knipex tool. Because when you go to a house and you got wire that's hanging out of a box that's existing, you usually only have about this much wire to play with. So if this is what's hanging out of our box and we're trying to put a Wago on it or whatever to extend it, you know, you got to get really close and you got to kind of do this number to kind of yuck on the wire to get it off, right? This thing here 
just does it for you, man. This thing is sweet. I've had this since 2010, 11. It just works. So my weapon of choice isn't even any of these for really wire stripping because this thing exists. And this thing's expensive. I think I got this for like 60 back in the day. This thing's probably a hundred bucks now. But if I didn't have one, I would probably have to go buy another one. And it's one of the few, few tools that I kept. If you don't know anything about this channel, uh, we pretty much had to throw away everything I've ever owned because of mold. All the tools, all of my cars, all of my clothes, all of my kids' toys. We had to buy a new house, um, tripled the mortgage, doubled the interest rate. It, it's It's been crazy. So uh, this is one of the tools that I kept that I dunked. I literally have my doctor because I've got CIRS, which is, uh, if you look it up, it's, it's, it's a bad thing. Um, my doctor really told me to pour acetone on my belongings if I want to keep them. This is one that I poured acetone on. Does your wife know you have strippers in the garage? Yeah. Uh, teach you something. Cool guy. Head over appeals. Nice. That's a cool name. What do you want to know, man? You want to know about the code book? You want to know about... Uh, you want to know that pretty much all the lobbyists are pushing national electric codes now. And when you go to these meetings to vote on what should be a code, you got lobbyists that have their interest in selling you more products. And then it's like, it's a five to one split on the vote. So now you got people that are forcing that to be a code. And you got only a couple of inspectors that are at the meetings trying to vote against what they're trying to sell. So now we've got things like mandatory surge, which adds a minimum of $300 per panel install. We've got emergency service disconnects when most of the fire department still pulls the meter and doesn't bother to actually try to find the disconnect switch because the meter is guaranteed to turn the power off and the switch may or may not. You've got, you've got requirements for spark guards. So now we gotta have the finished surface of the box not set back more than a quarter of an inch. So if we got a receptacle and we installed tile here, now we got to have a box extender to extend that box, even though tile is literally made with fire. So there's no way it could ever catch fire, but yet we got to make a code so these guys can sell more box extenders. How's that for knowledge? You're not going to hear that anywhere else. It, I could go on, man. You gotta have listed fan rated boxes. So now we gotta install fan rated boxes anywhere we could possibly install a ceiling fan. Doesn't matter if you're gonna put one there or not. You have to put a fan rated box in that location just in case someone wants to install a ceiling fan. Um, yeah, I, I could go on, man. I've got a whole list of things. Yeah, it's US electrical code. We've got, they started recently, and, and look, I don't wish anything ill on anybody. And they they should be codes, kind of. They, they, should, they should be more proactive than reactive. And I got a video about this. It's in members only right now. I don't know if I'm going to release it or not. But <laughs> we got Vsauce back. <laughs> so they made a rule. Somebody got hurt really badly on an air conditioner and they jumped it was a kid and they're not with us anymore it was it was actually a bad deal we'll see you later dave so this kid grabbed the fence and he grabbed the air conditioner and he got electrocuted and instead of them saying you know well the ground wire wasn't connected properly the way they ran the flex to the ac unit should have been done a different way they immediately jumped on, let's install GFCI protection for the ACs now. And they just made it a code. And everyone just voted on it so they could sell more GFCIs. Um, it was a knee-jerk reaction. And I get that you want to do stuff because 
you want to be reactive to the situation. But what that causes, I don't know. Uh, a, a seconda. I don't know. So anyway, now we've got now we've got GFCI protection for ACs in Texas, where the actual unit has the leakage current. So your AC won't turn on. What do you do? We're going to call an HVAC tech. HVAC tech comes out maybe a day later, maybe the same day if you're lucky. He looks around, charges you his dispatch fee and his diagnostics, and he says, I can't fix it. You need to call an electrician. An electrician comes out and says, oh, it's these darn GSCIs. I got to do diagnostics on it so I can figure out what's going on with the AC system, right? The wiring whatever it might be. Well, it's the unit all along. So we've gone two days in the heat, elderly couple without their air conditioner. And once it's all said and done, it's you can't fix it. The AC is what's bad. So then the, the, the electrician, oh, well, it's code. I can't take off a GFCI breaker. And then somebody gets shocked because that's my license at stake. So now you go back to the manufacturer. Hey, what are you gonna do about your air conditioner? That's that's leakage current. I done I done replaced the GFCI. We rerouted the wire in the house. That was a couple of thousand dollars. We did the diagnostics. That was like five hundred dollars. Figure out what's going on. And all this time, you're without an air conditioner the whole time. So they they kind of backed off it in Texas to where it's still kind of a code, but they kind of keep pushing it off to the next code cycle. But it's still a code. You still got to do it. And if you don't do it, your license is at stake. It's it's just a slippery slope, man. All these codes, they shouldn't be codes. This kid was like, ha, ha, ha. Usually use views. Find a time no one else is live in the crowd you roll with. Can I have a shout out? Uh, cheesers, yeah. What's going on, Cheesers? Industry lobby money. That's right. Hey, appreciate you mods. Um, yeah, trolls are crazy today. No worries. Don't know if I'm going live tomorrow. I'm not sure. Trying to hang out with my neighbor that lives next to my old house. So my, my ex-neighbor is trying to hang out and uh, tell me more about the house and what's going on with it because as you know the house had mold in it and uh we told the contractors but they didn't seem to care and it seems like now they're finding out the hard way that they shouldn't have bought the house i told them not to buy the house i was like don't buy the house it's literally going to make you die but they insisted on buying it so uh, i was glad to get rid of it but you know i warned them and listening to you feels very calm to be honest i appreciate that so anyway, uh, we got to get, but uh, appreciate all the support. Thanks to all the mods for uh, getting rid of the trolls. And uh, yeah, that's my thought on these. They're nice. Are they worth having? I don't know, man. It's one of those tools. Like you're not cool if you don't have it, but you're not going to miss it. If you're actually turning tools and you're trying to make money doing what you're doing, I don't think you're going to miss this one. So, there's my two cents on it. Uh, what's going on? I think that says hello. What's up, Oscar? Okay. Appreciate all the support. See you guys in the next one. What are we talking about? All kinds of stuff, man. Go back and watch the live. We're out of here.